morning and welcome to the Sunderland Veterans Memorial <laughs> and the Veterans Day Observance Ceremony. I would like to welcome everyone to this special event. Sunderland Elementary students and staff, community members, and of course, all of the veterans in attendance. At this time, I would like to invite Sanaa Johnson, Paris Stilla, and Claire McFarland to the podium, who will read the Governor Baker's Veterans Day Proclamation. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas, on November 11, 1918, the armistice was signed in the Forest of Compiègne by the Allied Nations and Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars. After four years of conflict and whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans and whereas there are approximately 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts. Whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country and whereas we honor and salute, salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage and whereas it is appropriate that all the Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom and whereas in no in November 2018, the world will commemorate the, one th the 100th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 o'clock a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2018, to be Veterans Day, and urge all of the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 11th day of November in the year 2018, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 242nd by His Excellency Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you, Sana, Parrish, and Claire. Cadet Color Guard, please retire the colors. <laughs> Group attack! Present arms! take just a moment to introduce all the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines that came out here today to help us with this ceremony. We, uh, we truly appreciate them being here. What I'm going to do is just read it off by their, by their units. Lieutenant Colonel Magner is our guest speaker today. You'll hear more about his, his background in just a moment. And then the cadets that just uh, retired the colors are Cadet Max Abrams, Cadet Jack Kudmar, Cadet Daniel Keeson, Cadet Brendan McLaughlin, and Cadet Nicole Patel. From the University of uh, Massachusetts at uh, Amherst uh, Army ROTC. I'm sorry, I should have announced that first. The Air Force ROTC is Sergeant Aaron Guy and Senior Airman Tori Ash. The 302nd, there's Major Ben Lute, uh, Sergeant First Class Terry Castain, and Corporal Zachary Reck. The 302nd uh, MEP is an Army Maneuver Enhancement Brigade. 
From the military entrance processing station, we have First Sergeant Tiffany Taylor, HM1 Ronnie Rodriguez Molina, and Sergeant Helena Porter. <laughs> from the Marines, we have from Moss 6, Sergeant Dylan Babb, Sergeant Troy Macon, and Sergeant Dom Dominic Jones. From MWS 472, we have Corporal Aguilar, Corporal Tarmac Cruz, and Corporal Quentin McDonald. And giving the commands today from MCSS Chicopee is Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Christopher Demostrinas. Thank you all for coming. to introduce our guest speaker. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen Magner is a native of Malden, Massachusetts. He graduated from Malden Catholic High School in 1993, enlisted in the US, United States Army, and served as a light howitzer crew member. from 1993 to 1996. He graduated from West Point Military Academy Preparatory School in 1996 and attended Nichols College from 96 to 2000. In the year 2000, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Army through the Worcester Polytechnic Institute's Army ROTC program. Following his commission, Colonel Magner served in several different positions, including platoon leader, company commander, and staff officer. Colonel Magner's foreign assignments include one tour of Qatar, two tours in Afghanistan, and two tours in Iraq. He is currently serving as a professor of military science and unit commander at the Army's ROTC detachment at UMass Amherst. <coughs> Colonel Magner's decorations include three bronze stars, three meritorious service medals, one joint service commendation medal, four army commendation medals, the Thailand and United States Parachutist Badges, and the Army's Combat Action Badge. Please join me in welcoming Colonel Magner as this year's guest speaker. Well, first I just want to say uh, thank you, Sergeant so Major, Marines, Army, Air Force, Navy. You all look really good. And I'll tell you, it's good that I'm not standing out there to be the other as well. Uh, most importantly, thank you to the students and the teachers uh, for being here. Uh, this is truly probably the most heartwarming, meaningful Veterans Day uh, recognition that we get to participate in. Uh, and it's truly because of the kids. And truly because of the school. Uh, if you remember last year, Cut down the wind a little bit, but I'll still keep my comments quick. Um, what I want to ask really quick here from the students, who here knows or has someone in their family or a neighbor who has served in the service somehow? Yep. If you put that hand down, I'm not sure. Who here knows that less than 1% of our country serve in any of the branches? So the fact that so many people here know so few in their community is truly heartwarming. We cannot think enough about what it means for veterans uh, to know that a community is reaching out. And the thing that really just makes a veteran is selfless service. You don't do it for pay. Do it out of sense of service, selfless service. So what I would ask you, um, you recognize a vet, you give them that hug because you know them in the family, or you give them that handshake. I would ask you to think about how can you serve in your little community. Part of that is right now being out here, but how can you serve at home? How can you help someone out that's tired? How can you help pick something up off the ground that you walk by that shouldn't be there? How can you be kind and be nice? How can you serve your community? And by asking yourselves that, that question, you'll recognize Veterans Day every day of your life. So thanks so much for being here. It's truly heartwarming. Thanks for allowing me to serve. Please direct 
your attention to the flag, where the Westover Honor Guard will be raising the flag to half staff. While Veterans Day is a tribute to America's living veterans and is more a celebration than a solemn remembrance, it is always appropriate to include a moment of respect for those who gave their lives for our country. One way that we show respect is to fly our flag a half staff in memory of an important person who has died. When a person in the, in the armed forces has died while serving our country, the song Taps is also played. The West Honor, Westover Honor Guard will now lower the flag to half staff while Taps is played by Frontier Regional Band students, Sebastian Richards and Phelan Kosky. Please feel free to put your hand over your heart during the flag lowering to half staff. It is appropriate to remain silent and quiet during this portion of the ceremony. Sunderland parent and school council representative Jessica Corwin will now lead students in song of My Country, Tis of Thee.
flag folding demonstration by the uh, Westover Honor Guard. They'll step out to the center of the circle and um, students, this is, uh, this is the way a flag is folded when we uh, honor someone who has uh, died after the, after the flag is on their uh, casket. <laughs> For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as the source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States would be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union would be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented to you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of our union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hardiness and valor, White signifies purity and innocence, and blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the mes mes message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to our Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space for the first time when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of Air Force satellites that circle our globe, and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine who serves our great country. The sun never sets on the United States military nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. Since 1776, no generation of Americans has been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines remain committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and we express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and who continue to fight for our freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, United States servicemen and women have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on land and skies above the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today because of their efforts. The United States flag represents who we are, stands for the freedom that we all share and the pride and patriotism that we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope for one and all. Long may it wave. Sixth grade students, Thomas Uncles and Sean Min's son will now read a Veterans Day poem. Take a moment to thank a veteran. When you see someone in a uniform, someone who serves us all, doing military duty, answering their country's call, take a moment to thank them. 
for protecting what you hold dear. Tell them you are proud of them. Make it very clear. Just tap them on the shoulder, give a smile, and say, thanks for what you're doing to keep us safe in the USA. Thank you, Thomas and John Min. Well done. We will now conclude our ceremony with a song, This Land is Your Land. special guests, the service women and men who helped to make this recognition ceremony so special. We appreciate all that you do for your communities and your country. As always, you are cordially invited back to Sunderland Elementary School to visit our classrooms and eat lunch with our students. Boys and girls, please listen to your homeroom teacher as we get ready to head back to school.